916 here on a Monday morning. It's the morning show with Jeff and Will, AM 1700 WRCR Haverstraw. Welcome everyone back to the show, 845-429-1700. That's our phone number. Uh, joining us now is Tina Traster from rcbizjournal.com. Good morning, Tina. Good morning, Rock and Jeff. Good morning, Rock and County. Um, somber day. We remember September 11th. I uh, wanted to just, uh, you know, take a nod to um, all of the heroes and everybody who, um, everybody in this country who came together around that date. Um, I have a favorite song that I listen to every year. Um, it's Alan Jackson, a country singer. Uh, it's called where were you when the world stopped turning? So if you guys get to spin that disc and play it for the, for the county. You know the song? I've heard it before, yes. Beautiful song. I think, you know, there are others who've written songs for that day. Leonard Cohn jumps to mind. I don't know, and others. But I don't know, something about that Alan Jackson song just, just hits the, the right spot. Uh, okay. Moving on to the business of Rockland County. It's been a couple of weeks uh, because of Labor Day since uh, we've been together. So let me try to, I won't talk too fast, but um, in Clarkstown, you know, Clarkstown has um, dedicated the area around the train station as something called a TOD, a transit-oriented development. Um, and these, these are popping up all over the country, and what they're designed to do is take a part of a community, uh, especially in a suburban area, where um, there's an opportunity to build housing that, that would be or should be targeted to millennials and empty nesters, and it's um, a, a dense housing uh, con- concept uh, that encircles um, a, a typically some sort of a, a major transport hub um, and it, it is designed to uh, concentrate, you know, development rather than continue the suburban sprawl. So these have been happening, and they can be very successful. Uh, but unfortunately, here in Clarkstown, and specifically in Nanuet, where this is by the Main Street, um, the town is, is having, the community's having trouble getting the jump started. And there have been... Um, some optimism going on because there was a developer called Sterling Development Group, uh, which is from Livingston, New Jersey. Uh, they do really, actually, really beautiful uh, community, really beautiful um, housing communities, uh, really exceptional uh, as as that goes. And uh, they they had been to the town, and the town uh, leaders were um, excited about their prospect of bringing 252 homes to that that area, um, and then they went to the Rockland County IDA, uh, Industri- Industrial Development Agency, uh, for what's known as a pilot in lieu of taxes. And it seemed that um, it seemed they were on their way, uh, even though they had asked for something a little bit conventional with a 20-year pilot, it seemed like that was moving along. And then suddenly, uh, last week or so, uh, they just, uh, without warning, withdrew their application. Um, there seems to be some mystery as to why I was not able to pin that down because the developer uh, would not get back to me. Um, but uh, some of my behind-the-scenes reporting seems to indicate potentially that uh, that pilot, um, even though the IDA had uh, signed off on a, on a resolution authorizing it, um, now, now just to understand, the IDA cannot grant um, a developer, these benefits, these tax benefits, um, that comes down to, in this case, it would have come down to the school district and, and the town. Um, however, uh, you know, they developers go to IDA to get their, their blessing so that they can move on. And um, everybody was surprised by the withdrawal of this application. Um, you know, what, what this points to, though, and, and what, what Bear's talking about here, and and. In a way, there's some parallel to the HNA site here. You have um, this, um, this. Hello. Yeah, we're here. Okay, I thought I, I thought I lost you on the phone. We have we have this TOD, and um, it, it's a very vital piece of land, but um, it is it, largely it's one landowner who owns the significant parcel where potential development is due to go, and from from. From, you know, by all accounts, 
uh, the Cone family um, ha has been difficult um, in, in terms of selling this property or, or coming to a deal to sell the property. Uh, this allegedly was, um, this deal allegedly $20 million for five acres, um, which seems really high. That, that seems like a really big price tag. Um, but so I'm not clear whether, um, you know, it was a continuation of, of or rather a breakdown in the negotiations between the developer and this landowner, um, or whether, in fact, this pilot wasn't tenable because 20 years is so unconventional. I, it, it's not, not entirely clear. Either way, it, it points to the same thing. The, the POD has been in the works for some 14 years. It, it, uh, it took a decade to bring it to life and to um, accept it, or to, you know, to adapt it as a local law. Then it was changed up, up somewhat, in fact, to accommodate uh, the Cone family in terms of the density that they wanted on their parcel. Um, and now we're still looking at, you know, an empty parcel and, and, and uh, the lack of an ability to be able to jumpstart this property. So it just, what it brings to mind is um, HNA and, uh, you know, Teresa Kenny's um, effort, which, which is now, um, it has become moot. Um, but when, when she, after two years after she had seen that that property was stalling, the town had started to uh, move toward eminent domain to take the land because of a valuable, crucial parcel in Orangetown. We're talking about the 106-acre parcel down on 9W where the HNA or former IBM property. Anyway, this, this property, it, it, kind of, it kind of smacks of the same, it raises the same question, which is if you have... All this, all this money that's gone into all this planning and all this zoning and all this vision in the comprehensive plan and this, this crucial parcel that is close to um, the shops at Manuet and, and train station, you know, the question is, uh, when is the time, I think what I'll leave people with is, when is the time for, this, for a town to say, okay, we're going to look at taking this land by eminent domain so that once and for all we can we can get it moving. I'm not I'm not advocating. I'm just putting the question out there. Um, any thoughts, questions? If not, I'll move on. Uh, nope, no thoughts, no questions. So you can move on. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. So the other story that we put out, and now it, it kind of seems like it was so long ago, but I think it's uh, just there uh, discussing and because it also impacts uh, business and the economics of Nyack, but the county at large. Um, NIAC, uh, you know, apparently the downtown uh, is experiencing a problem with uh, panhandling and other, I, I guess, uh, you know, uh, other crimes like um, drunken and lewd behavior and vandalism and <clears throat> quality of life issues. And um, I guess any place that has a concentration of restaurants and bars uh, can, can fall prey to that. Um, however, uh, Nyack is a, is a small village, and it is um, an economic uh, driver of tourism to, to, to the village and to, to the county at large. Um, it's probably Rockland County's um, biggest draw, I would think, maybe behind the health center. Maybe that's not even true anymore. But, but Nyack, the point is that, that Nyack is, is an important um, magnet uh, for, for people to come to this county and, and learn what is here. And there's this sense that there's a growing disorder in the village, and that um, you know th this has the potential to to undermine um, what has been a many-year um, campaign by Visit Naya to um, pull in tourist dollars uh, by way with the help of county tourism dollars uh, that they they. Every year, the county hands out uh, tourism dollars, and Visit Nyack um, always uh, is, is the highest prize winner there. So um, the the officials in in uh, Nyack have um, been putting their heads together on this uh, uh, this this issue uh, to deal with this vexatious behavior and to figure out um, what it is that they need to do. It it seems largely that it has to do with um, 
a homeless population, which really should be a countywide issue. Um, it used to be, the, the word on the street is that it used to be a handful of people who people in NIAC would know, uh, which doesn't make it really any better, but, but that it's, it's expanded, that kind of word got out, and that there are more people um, coming to NIAC, I guess, to, to beg for supper. And um, so this is a mental health issue, and it's also a, a um, law enforcement issue. And so the village is banded together with, um, you know, social services and the Orange Town Police, because NIAC does not have its own police force, um, and village officials and people from the business community uh, to try to figure out what they might be able to do. Um, amongst their, um, their, their plans, they're talking about um, a couple of things, like trying to put signage around to encourage people not to give panhandlers money, but instead to um, contribute to uh, agencies that help the homeless. Uh, that's been, that's been, that is done in other communities. I don't know how effective it is. They're also going to launch this NIAC ambassadors program where they intend to recruit and train volunteers to be the eyes and ears of the village, uh, kind of like a neighborhood watch program. Um, so, uh, and, and the Orange Town Police have been, are being urged to think about more community policing, uh, which means getting out of their cars, walking the beat, um, knowing people who are around, and, you know, having a presence as so as to deter some of the, uh, the quality of life issues. Uh, we will follow that story. It's an important story. It's important for NIAC. It's important for the whole county. Um, and I also just wanted to remind people that we are doing our next um, Meet the Editor Coffee, but this time in NIAC um, at the Run to the Spoon on September, uh, this Wednesday, September 13th at 8.30. So come on down and we can talk about NIAC and Rockland County and any other issue that's on anybody's mind. Excellent. Thank you so much, Tina, for joining us as always. We will talk to you again next Monday. Uh, if, in the meantime, everyone can go visit rcbizjournal.com, sign up for newsletters, uh, check out the events that uh, she's participating in, uh, and get some of the news that uh, is important to you in Rockland County. Thank you so much, Tina. Okay. Talk to you soon. Bye. Thank you.